second session of the day. Today we have a cooking demo, which is always fun. I'm, those of you that are contacting me through our mailing list, through our website are saying how much you enjoy the cooking demos. We had one from Chef Ramses Bravo on Monday, and we are going to have one from Chef Del Roof tomorrow. But today we have the low-fat herbivore Jocelyn Grafe. If you watch me regularly, you may have been introduced to her a few weeks ago when it was an interview, and she talked about all the wonderful things she's up to. But last week on Weight Loss Wednesday, where I release a recipe a week, I did the recipe from her book called The Low-Fat Herbivore, where I made the lemony artichoke soup. And you guys said, oh, I'd love to see more of her recipes. So she's going to come on and make three of them. And I'm also going to give you guys the link to her YouTube page so you can subscribe because she has some really fabulous recipes. What I love about her recipes are not only that they're low-fat, we've got the low-fat herbivore. We've got the low fat vegan, and then we've got another one here, is that they're really easy to make with easy to find ingredients, and they are delicious. And she doesn't use any oil. And even when she has sugar and salt, it's like really optional. So it's up to you guys. So please welcome the low fat herbivore, Jocelyn Grave. Hi, you guys. I am so thrilled to be here. I've just been so excited for days about being here. Well, good. Well, we can't wait to see what you're going to make. And I'm going to post a link right now to your YouTube page where they can check out your other fabulous recipes. But what are you going to make for us today, Jocelyn? Three things. And just kind of to prove how fast this healthy cooking is. I'm going to make tangy potatoes on page 80 of my book. And by the way, the other cover, it's still the same book. I switch up covers. I, this is like my sixth printing of the book. So it's all the same recipes. I've been using them for 17 years and I'm still not sick of them. So tangy potatoes on page 80 for those of you who have the book, broiled tomatoes on page 93, and saucy cauliflower on page 102. So now what I've done to kind of speed things up a little, and I'm going to show you the food. I've um, steamed the cauliflower. I have diced and cooked the potatoes. And I've diced and cooked an onion. So now we can because everybody knows how to do that. So now we can get down to business. I think I'm going to start with the broiled tomatoes. Can you see that? Yes, and it's a very pretty plate, by the way. Oh, well, thank you, Ikea. So we're going to put on top of these, this is like an embarrassingly simple recipe, and it's insanely good. I mean, this is so good. This is company food. So we're going to add to um, a tablespoon of whatever mustard you like, and we're going to add one crushed garlic clove and a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Get those nice and stirred up until it's a nice creamy incorporated sauce. And you're going to put on your oven to broil. And you're gonna on the top of these, this recipe you can do like a couple of three or four halves, four halves. I just want to excuse me for interrupting just yeah. because I'm getting text messages from friends saying your book is not in stock on Amazon. Right. That's okay because I'm posting a link to where you can get it, which is an Etsy store called Vegan for good with the number four store. So I, I've been posting the link to that and you can get her books and other merchandise, for example, she has this very cute t-shirt that I've worn that says vegan chick and she has uh, different bags. So again, uh, Amazon does not have her book right now, but her store, Vegan for Good Store, which I'll keep posting the link for, uh, does have the books. And I'm also gonna post the link to her YouTube channel and we would love for you guys to just click that and please subscribe. So again, I apologize for interrupting, but uh, the text messaging was- That was a worthy interrupt. Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so we've got a tablespoon of mustard, a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, and one crushed garlic clove. And I have kind of just drizzled them over the top. And I'm gonna put them in the broiler. 
And you want to keep your eyes on this because it happens fast. Because I'm saying, oh my gosh, that was fast. Look, they're done. So these I did obviously earlier. And uh, they're really cool looking, these little tomato halves. And those go in your plate. And so that's done. Fastest, simplest thing in the world. Now, it's delicious. Oh, it's so good. You have got to try it. Just because it's simple, don't let that fool you. It's crazy good. You know, I've never used my broiler. <laughs> oh, well, do it for this. You won't be sorry. Um, so now I'm going to go to the saucy cauliflower. And full disclosure, I'm generally not a huge fan of cauliflower. I know cauliflower rice and cauliflower this and that. Um, there are two ways that I really like my cauliflower. Baked whole spread with hummus. That's just my kind of recipe. It's so simple. You just throw it in the oven an hour later, you've got it. And this is another recipe I love. So steamed cauliflower. And then we're gonna put, um, a can of diced tomatoes in the pan. Can't forget to turn the oven on. A half a cup of vegetable broth and a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast, which by the way, is not only a flavor enhancer, it's a sauce thickener. So it has a dual purpose here. And we're gonna let that thicken and cook a little bit. So I have been busy, um, like fixated in front of the computer. I've got a new cookbook coming out. I don't know when yet. Um, almost 700 original recipes. Not all of them as simple as this, but nothing terribly elaborate. I'm a big believer that uh, Dinner should be on the table from start to finish in about 30 minutes. That's about my attention span. So I'm heating up the, uh, the tomatoes. I'm waiting for this to thicken up a little bit. And then we're just gonna mix the cauliflower in, plate it up and we're good to go. What's the name of your new book? Do you know? Fast, Easy, Vegan. That's nice. Yeah, it, um, I developed the recipes over a couple of years when I had a, a, a menu blog where I was doing uh, meal recipes for people five nights a week. My problem is marketing. I don't understand that business. So well, well, we're here to help you and get people. To I know. Like you're my, you you're my hero, AJ. Yeah. You're my hero. And that many, was... many, many other people. Oh. Too. So uh, we have a question. Can you... the Broiled tomatoes that you showed, can, could somebody air fry them and get a similar result? I don't know. I don't know, but I bet you could. And the reason that I, um, maybe a close-up look, do those look yummy? They look delicious. They almost look like pizza. Yeah, exactly. Only better. Um, the air fryer, what a good idea. I wonder if they dry out. What do you think? I think I'll have I don't have any tomatoes right now. We're only going to the store once a week during sheltering, but I'm going to test it and let you know. Okay. They, you know, my worry is that will they stick because of, um, you know, the wet, I don't know, but it's a great question and, and we won't know until we try. Yeah. You know, once, once somebody asked me if you could uh, put a banana in the Instant Pot and I don't know, I still haven't tried it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I watch your Instant Pot recipes all the time and I marvel at your facility with it because it's just, I use it religiously for cooking beans. It makes the creamiest, most delicious beans. Other than that, it's just kind of a mystery. I well, like the, uh, the visual, the contact, and uh, I like to be in control of when the heat goes off. Well, did you know that the last recipe of yours I did on my YouTube channel, I, I converted it to the Instant Pot. So that's my job is I take all your wonderful recipes and show them ready to fuel in the Instant Pot. I love that. I love that. Okay. This is looking pretty good. Yeah. For me, cauliflower, it's just bland. I, I'm a high flavor kind of woman. And uh, this really adds a nice, a nice bit to it. 
What I love about cauliflower though, it, it may be bland, but I always think that bland is grand because then you can flavor it any way you want. Just that's like true. Food. Yeah. Beth says the tangy potatoes sound amazing. Yeah, if you like lemon, you'll like the tangy potatoes. I almost did the potatoes of grief. Um, so simple, boil potatoes, mash them up and throw in some sauerkraut. It's delicious. I was a little hesitant at first because it sounds kind of weird, but ooh, it's yummy. Now, if the dog weren't out for a walk with his dad, he'd be here waiting patiently by my side for something to drop on the floor. There we go. Saucy cauliflower. That didn't take so long. That's it? That's it, darling. Holy mackerel. We're I know. At no time. Yeah, exactly. Of course, I cheated and I pre-cooked some stuff. But now we're moving on to our tangy potatoes. Now, what I've done, I've diced and sauteed, water sauteed, of course, uh, an onion. So that's what takes the most time here. And I pre-cooked my potatoes. So all we have left to do is add the juice of two lemons, a teaspoon of turmeric with a sprinkling of pepper to activate that, all the good health benefits of turmeric. So, so somebody's saying they wish they could see your face. Kathleen is saying. So you understand that my guests are. are Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> well, the, you will see it, Kathleen. It, it's just you saw the cooking demo with Ramses. We most of them, maybe Kathy Hester is the exception with her three cameras, and maybe JL Fields, who's going to come on. Don't do this professionally. So we just use Zoom, and they're using their phone or their computer. So you'll either see them or you're cooking. So you can focus on the cooking, and then when she's done. You can see her beautiful face and we'll ask her questions, but th that's kind of how it is for the most part. Yeah, I'll have to talk to Kathy about how, what her setup is. I got to meet her through you and I've been a huge fan of hers for years. I've got her books. I have like 500 vegan cookbooks. It's insane. Um, and I got to, I was right next to her with uh, Kathy and Cheryl when they were there and we bonded and I just love her. We're gonna have Kathy Hester on very soon. And we're having another Kathy next week, Kathy Fisher. Oh, Kathy Fisher, I met her too. She's another fun lady. All right, so this is just a matter of stirring up your cooked potatoes inside your sauciness and getting it nice and hot. See, this is why I wrote a sauce cookbook because, you know, that's, for me, that's key to everything. That's true because you can almost eat styrofoam peanuts if they have sauce. Exactly. <laughs> good point. Okay. Looking good. Okay, you guys. Dishing up. You know, it's funny when I'm doing um, videos, I lose my, completely lose my sense of time. I think something's three minutes and it's 10 and all right. Done, 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 done. Kind of beautiful, right? Oh my God. I mean, that's like no time, like a yeah. whole delicious meal. Yeah. And it's not like I was slaving over this beforehand either. So let me dish it up so you guys can see what it looks like on a plate. I found a pretty green plate and I wanna show it to you, your dinner. Now I have to, uh, I have to admit my husband and I eat large quantities of food. So this plate isn't very honest because it's small quantities as far as I'm concerned. But there it is, dinner. I don't even think I'm gonna need a salad with this tonight. Maybe, I like my raw veggies. Mm -hmm. So that's it. 
that's incredible that you showed how easy it is to make a healthy, delicious meal. And, and you basically did it in under 15 minutes. It might have been 10 with just a little bit of preparation. It's one of the secrets of life. And, and, and honestly, um, if dinner is that easy, you, people are going to cook. Yeah. Ellen says, a saucy chef, nice presentation. So all three of these Aww. recipes are, all three of these recipes are in your book, the low fat herbivore, which I've been posting the link for, right? And, yep. and have you done it? Now your YouTube channel is fairly new. So when did you start it? And what, what kind of recipes can we find on the channel? I'm gonna provide the link so hopefully people will subscribe. All the recipes are in my book. So um, I'm just demonstrating them. That's terrific. Yeah. Where, where do you get your inspiration from? Guys, this was the quick, quickest cooking demo in the history of <laughs> my show. So we can we can ask Jocelyn questions now. And we can it, it was a question on what was the sauce in the potatoes. Um, the sauce in the potatoes is uh, the juice of two lemons, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a sprinkling of fresh cracked pepper to activate the turmeric. Oh my God. Uh, and, oh. and that's it. Oh, oh, and well, no, min one minced onion just adds that nice that nice bit to it. Um, could not be simpler. And honestly, this is a great dinner. This will disappear tonight, probably. Beverly, the name of her book is The Low Fat Herbivore. And I, whoops, I accidentally just posted the link to her YouTube channel instead. Her book is not available right now on Amazon, but she has an Etsy store called Vegan for Good Store with the number four, and I'm posting it right there. I've had her book for a long time. And if you're familiar with my recipes, I've taken a few of her recipes and just put them in the Instant Pot for you on my YouTube channel. And one of them, black bean mushroom chili, it says in my book, it's totally Jocelyn, Jocelyn Grace's recipe. All I did was change a little bit of the spices to my liking and just put it in the Instant Pot. Veronica says, thank you, I will be trying these. And uh, do you deliver? <laughs> Is there a question? Do you deliver? Do I deliver? L locally in Vallejo, you bet. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> this was my first cookbook. Okay, same recipe, same thing. This was the result of, and my cookbook is the result of my first year of going vegan in, from 2003 to 2004. And uh, totally a home job, but I still use it because it lies flat and I love that. Um, so yeah, 17 years of use and still, I still like my recipes they still work for me so i hope they work for everybody too and i'm really excited for when my fast easy vegan comes out that's going to be close to 700 original recipes well when when that comes out we'll have you on the show again and maybe you'll make 70 of them because you could probably do that in an hour the way you cook all right i know i can do you know eight or ten <laughs> uh, yes gina she has a sauce cookbook and it's called low fat vegan dips, dressings, and sauces. And if you just go over to the Etsy store, the link I'm posting right now, you yep. can find all her cookbooks, her t-shirts, and her bags. That's and it. It looks so beautiful and delicious. I'm always looking for more recipes, but also happy with potatoes and greens every day. Uh, Kathleen says she loves my shirt. Did I buy it locally? No, let me tell you, my shirt is from another one of these wonderful vegan uh, chefs. This is from Janine Elder from Potato Wisdom, and she's going to be coming on to, to, to do a cooking demo from her book, Potato Reset soon. And there's a question about how long have you been a vegan uh, from Nadej? Me or you? Me. I mean, you. I, I, mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. know. You've, been, you've been almost a lifelong vegan. Yeah, 43 years. So 43 wow. out of 60. Wow. Congratulations. I've been vegan for, I'm in my 17th year. So, um, and my husband, oh, this is a great story. Um, I'm the cook in the house and he's thrilled with whatever I make. He doesn't really care. So after almost a year of going vegan, that's all we had in the house. He didn't have any options. I figured when he was out at work, he was getting his usual turkey sandwich or whatever. He came home one night and he said, you know, I've been vegan for six months and I can't find any reason not to stick with it. So that was it. And he really, he concedes that it saved his life. He had some real health issues. That is incredible. Yeah. So, so he's question, very open-minded too, though. That's great. 
Dina says, when your new book comes out, will it be all new recipes or will it be some from the original cookbook? Yeah, I will have all the recipes of my original cookbook as well as, you know, 600 new ones. 600? That's incredible. I spent my whole life trying to come up with like 300 and it took like a long time. How are you coming up with all of these? Um, I love flavors. My son's a chef and we talk food a lot. And um, he has told me in the past that even though he, he knows his way around the kitchen, um, that vegan cooking is a thing. And he, he can't even go to the no oil. That's like beyond his, his ken. Um, so we've talked a lot about it, but also because I love flavor and I get bored very easily, I think my taste buds have ADD because I can't just eat one food all the time. So I have this marvelous recipe, uh, book, cookbook collection. And when I find a recipe that I like, I play with it, I veganize it if it isn't vegan. I change it up and, uh, and I like to get things down to the lowest common denominator. In other words, as simple and flavorful and fast as possible. And it seems to work. My husband hasn't left yet. <laughs> that's great. G saying he has only about five recipes and that's all he eats, but people are different. Dr. Lyle talks yeah. about one of the points of personality is how open we are to novelty and experience. And some people need a lot of variety and some people don't. Yeah. Also, um, and you would know more about this than I, but um, I have a friend who's a food addict and we talk about food a lot. And she says what works best for her is a really structured, limited palate. And she, it makes her feel safe and secure. And she knows, you know, she's on the track she wants to be. And that was really interesting for me to hear um, because the, it, I'm a different personality and a different food personality too. So yeah, I, I think uh, food personalities are, are very real for sure. I agree. And I always say, you know, I get accused of telling people they got to eat a certain way. I don't really tell anybody anything, even my clients who, who are paying me, do the least restrictive program you can do that gets you the results that you say you want. And that's really what it's all about. And some people have to tighten screws a little bit more to get certain results. And if you don't, you don't have to do that. So yeah. we have a question from V. Do you have any suggestions on batch cooking preparation? Oh, great question, V. No. <laughs> um, I think AJ is the queen of batch cooking. Years ago, I joined um, Food Not Bombs because I wanted to learn to cook in big quantities. It's a totally different chemistry. Um, whether uh, just how the ingredients work together, um, the spices, you can't just simply scale up. It doesn't work. So I got to learn to cook big batches and I got to share that food with new friends I met in the parks or under bridges or wherever we were feeding people or sharing food with people. And uh, so, so that's as close to batch cooking as I've ever gotten. I don't have any room to freeze stuff. I mean, my freezer is stuffed full of this and that. So I tend to just cook what we're going to eat. Now, a day like today, this is really great to get all my cooking out of the way um, because it's hot. It's going to be in the high 80s today. And I'm not going to want to be cooking later in the afternoon where, where the heat is really scorching me. Which also reminds me of a cookbook that I have somewhere. Years ago, I was reading through it. And it's about how women cooked in Italy before refrigeration. So in other words, most of the history of Italy. And because it gets so hot there, these women would cook their food in the morning and or cook whatever they could and needed to in the morning. And then before dinner, dinner was often just a series of room temperature dishes and they're delicious. So food doesn't always have to be hot and it doesn't have to be either hot or ice cold. It can be room temperature too. These tomatoes uh, work really well room temperature. And I don't know, I haven't tried the others, but um, anyway, it was something that piqued my interest. Now you said, what temperature is it where you are today? It's gonna be about 86. Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. Oh, I know, I know, you desert girl. 
Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and it still doesn't feel hot yet to me. Well, the, the, yeah, dry heat. I lived in New Mexico and yeah, 106 was not unusual yeah. in the summer though, not, not this time of year. Yep. Gina so. says you're so interesting, non-refrigerated cooking. I think the season depends sometimes because when it's, you know, that's the thing, I have nothing against smoothies, but when it's freezing cold, I'm not drawn to them. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I'm a fan of Ayurveda. And um, Ayurveda has really helped me a lot with certain health issues at the, as they came up over the years. Namely, when I went through menopause, I got high blood pressure. Thanks, mom. So it's genetic. There's nothing anybody can do about it except for Ayurveda. So I take little herbal pills every day. And my blood pressure today was 114 over 70. So, you know, it obviously works. And Ayurveda is so incorporated into food. It's been around for 6,000 years and they understand better than anybody the power and importance of food, along with herbs, if you need them. Um, so another story, do you wanna hear another health story? I would love to hear another health story. Well, Barry and I, my husband, we were getting ready to drive to Texas to see the grandkids. And about a couple of weeks before, he's saying, you know, every time I eat, my gut really hurts. And I don't know what's going on with that. Um, so we did everything we could. He did a little cleanse that didn't help. He did this and that until like the day before we left, it was just kept getting worse. So he went to the emergency room. They did uh, uh, one of those, uh, Ultra, they did an ultrasound for about 45 minutes on him. They couldn't figure it out, uh, but they did send us a $6,000 bill. We were so grateful for their attention. And I have a friend who's an Ayurvedic doctor in New Mexico. I called him up, Prakash, we need your help. Can we stop? We're going to Texas tomorrow and we need to see you because Barry's in serious condition. It was not good. He said, sure, so we go. And he takes his pulses and he looked at his tongue and he looked at his eyes and he said, gallbladder sludge. And he gave Barry a, a, this bland diet to eat for a couple of weeks. And he sent us off with beet soup. That was the most delicious beet soup I've ever had. I have the recipe, it's in the new book. And within a day and a half, Barry was feeling fine and he's been fine ever since. Though he's the kind of guy where if he's going to do something, he'll do it right. Uh, so he, for the whole two weeks, he stuck to the cleansing diet and the particular foods that he was given. And it was things like zucchini and potatoes and, you know, food, food you can find anywhere. That's what I love about your recipes is, well, actually one of your recipes had marjoram and I just had never tried it, but that's not because it's not widely available, but you use real food for real people, accessible yeah. ingredients, not expensive ingredients. And even though you may not batch cook in the formal sense that we think of, you do do a little bit of preparation ahead of time. And the fact that you had the cauliflower steamed and the potatoes cooked, it just makes it very easy to throw together a meal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I actually learned how to batch cook from you. I mean, your videos are so solid and they're so interesting. There's so much information. You give information the way I cook in a, in a very, you pack a lot in a short period of time. So your bags with the cooked rice that you flatten and stack and you're, I mean, genius. Thank you. Well, I just posted the link to your YouTube channel so guys click it what's the big deal subscribe she and your recipes also on the youtube you have this adorable dog named bix that appears in every episode he's the kitchen supervisor and then my that was easy my easy button because it always is <laughs> i subscribe to very few people you and pluto the dog so you know i have very very discerning tastes Aww, so, so you I, I don't know if this is an appropriate question but um, somebody wants to know how old you are. So I'm 67 and the face, this is about doing years of sun way before I was 18. So a doctor, a dermatologist once told me, yeah, if you've done a lot of sun before 18, you've wrecked your skin forever. So it doesn't reflect my brilliant good health. That's okay. That's quite <laughs> all right. How many kids do you have and are any of them eat, eating this way? Yeah, I have two kids, a girl and a boy. So I figured that's, you know, 
I'll quit while I'm ahead, one of each. And my daughter's vegan. And in fact, she got me started. We made a pact in 2003. It's time. Let's go vegan. Um, I was already, yeah, I was 50. I just turned 50. I come from a family of heart disease. The light on that train was coming straight at me in the tunnel, and I knew it. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we went vegan together. And she's still at it and I'm still at it. And my husband's is still at it and my son will not give up the meat. So that's his decision. And, but I'm working on his kids. <laughs> that's terrific. Um, Arlo Jill says, Jocelyn, you're, you're beautiful and you have an infectious, infectious, not an infective, an infectious smile. And <laughs> Kathleen wants to know what pans you use. And if you want to comment on any other cookware that you feel would be helpful for people that are wanting to cook more healthy meals at home. I like stainless steel a lot. I have one um, nonstick pan that I use for a particular potato dish that I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a video of it. And that really helps because I like it crispy on the bottom and uh, it would stick in a pan because obviously I don't use oil. So there's a, a little technique I use for that. So I have two of these nice solid double bottomed steel um, saucepans. I got my saucepans at I think Marshall's. I've gotten um, like steel sauce pots from Ikea. And then this is kind of my favorite thing. This big soup pan with a copper bottom. I got it at a lucky store about 30 years ago because it's got a steamer basket. So this, you can steam huge amounts. I mean, these little tiny piddly steamer baskets. I'm sorry, I eat a lot of food. I, I believe in quantity, so those are my pans. And I have a couple little steel saucepans too. So nothing fancy. I am uh, not a fan of whole foods. It makes me angry that food is insanely priced because there are so many people who can barely afford a head of lettuce. So to make food an elite thing is, is I believe morally wrong. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of whole foods. I buy my uh, organic foods at Costco or wherever else I can afford them. And I couldn't afford to eat at whole foods anyway, even if I wanted to. Um, and I go in there occasionally if there's an ingredient, some weird ingredient that I can't find. Oh my goodness, Vallejo is the worst food town. They're from the 50s. Everything here is like puffy white bread and Velveeta cheese, it's gross. So there's no place we can eat and there's no place where I can get ingredients. So I have to leave like chia seeds. You mentioned chia seeds, AJ, the other day. And I thought, yeah. You, in fact, on one of my YouTube recipes uh, that I was using flax seeds, you were asking if uh, I could use chia seeds and, or you could use chia seeds, absolutely. In fact, that's probably a better idea. So I thought, yeah, I got to try it. And I can't find, I still can't find chia seeds. One day I'll venture out when the plague has diminished somewhat. That's amazing. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just like chia seeds better because they have that property, like little, they, they make things, you know, kind of like jelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you have any favorite knives? Um. My husband bought me some knives. Um, this is the one I use the best. It's a, sh a real chef's knife. It, uh, the problem with these really great knives though, you have to sharpen them all the time, which is kind of annoying. But I also have an Ikea knife that has kept its edge and it's absolutely wonderful. But I like the size and weight of this. And, um, you said Jill Di Giovanni. I, you know, it, it's going. The feed goes very fast, but it's. Uh, it looks like Arlo Jill is the name. Yeah. Well, that's that's. She's a friend. We met in Germany. Oh. And yeah. Here, I mentioned that my book is in. Well, here. Well, as long as let's do a plug from Germany. Got my book in German now. 
you do. AJ, congratulations. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's hardcover with oh. amazing photos, so it's pretty cool. Wow, congratulations. That's outstanding. That's really exciting. Thank and uh, Jill is actually Canadian and she's a trained chef and her food, oh my God, having dinner at her house is an event, memorable. I will never forget the dinner she made at her house for us. Uh, and plus she's fun. We hang out on yeah. email. <laughs> Jan says I could watch her all day. Why don't we just keep this on? I mean, I have other things to do, but I'll just keep the Zoom on and we'll just keep it on Jocelyn all day. Sort of like the Truman Show, you know? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Melissa says she has a really cool vibe like you, AJ. I try to bring you very cool people. And, uh, you're going to make me blush. There's some other nice comments. Let's see. Um, it goes, there was just, I'll, I'll find it. There was a very nice comment about you, and I will find it. I promise that, they, that, that but they like you. Oh, here it is from Elena. Amazing woman. Thank you for bringing such good guests. I do my best to bring good guests. Oh. That right. Well, I'm, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been a fan of yours for forever. Should we tell the story of how we met? Absolutely. After I read this one comment from PMAC, very interesting and lovely lady. And I uh, oh. wanted to thank, and foot, I'm sorry if I, foot, Footly Julie, thank you, Chef AJ, for introducing us to Jocelyn. It's my pleasure. So in it to, to, if you really want to thank me, then all you have to do is just click this link and subscribe to our YouTube channel because Please. even if you don't watch, it really helps out a person uh, growing an audience and, and her recipes are easy and great. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. I'm just really thrilled to be here. Yeah, we so, met Colin Campbell, who's going to be on the show very soon, as is his daughter-in-law, Kim Campbell, doing a cooking demo. But I sought you out based on a delicious recipe called mushroom chili. You, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking you to know. Her, Jocelyn. <laughs> right, yeah. you're right. That Jocelyn back there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my mushroom chili, I know that's been your favorite recipe of mine for, for a long time. So we met, um, I forget, was it on your website and that I subscribed to that? I think I, I sought you out asking if I could make your recipe on my YouTube channel and, and change a few things. And you said, yes, I, I could probably look it up by going to an old email, but we met in person when I was speaking at the San Francisco Veg Fest and you actually picked me up at the Oakland airport. and took Right. Me that, that was, you put out a request. Does anybody live in the area who would be willing to pick me up? And I was hoping I was the first in line. I will, I will, I will. Cause I was already familiar with your work and I thought, cool, I get to meet Chef AJ. And then we had, and then I took you to Berkeley Bowl, which yeah, that was an amazing. That is an amazing store, and you drove me all the way to Belvedere to the Wheats House, which was so cool because we had time to hang out for an hour in the car and uh, really get to know each other a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was when. What year was that? I have no sense of time. I have to look it up. I would say at least six years ago, but I, I would have to look it up. Yeah, you meet amazing people through. Through, through shows like this. Judy yeah. says, I bought Jocelyn's cookbook after listening to the interview you recently did with her. Thank you, Judy. Judy is, a, is thanks. awesome. I'm, thanks, Judy. And, and I remember you. Yeah. yeah. Thank from you. From the Ultimate Weight Loss Conference. And, you know, um, there is an interview a few weeks ago with Jocelyn, if you want to find out more about what she does, because she has another life. She has, she's, she, she has her finger in a lot of pies. She has, yeah. she has, she creates art, she creates jewelry, she does Reiki, she does channeling. So she, she's got a full life, which if you listen to our last guest at 11, he was talking about how, uh, what happiness is and people that are happy generally do things and engage in life. And you do. Yeah. I live in my head. You correctly um, assessed me as an introvert the other day, which kind of took me aback because I'm really, um, I love people. I love engaging with people. Um, but as I thought about it, it's like, yeah, I need a lot of downtime, alone time, because I pretty much live in my head and I've always got five projects going. If I'm not knitting, I'm making polymer clay or making sculpture or writing a cookbook or, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I stay busy. Um, and then working with clients too. So uh, I completely forget what I started to say. So it, that thought just kind of flew out. 
like a butterfly. That's okay. People are asking for the a link to the interview we did together, and I am trying to find it now, but I don't. I, I always get nervous when I jump screens, you know, from the comments to whatever, because I, I definitely don't want to knock people off, people. you know. Yeah, well, if you want to look for that, I can tell the story of my mom and what vegan uh, food did for her. Perfect. Yeah? Thank you. Thank okay. you. So my mom was really a, an amazing progressive woman. She raised her three kids. Um, we never had a TV dinner in, back in the 50s. I'm 67, so think back 50s. We never had any of that garbage food, nothing processed. Uh, my father was German, so we all knew about whole grain breads. And uh, I was the only kid at school with whole grain bread. I felt like a freak. It was com completely humiliating, but good for her. And there was no sugar in the house. I didn't have sugar. We were not allowed to have sugar except on our birthdays and birthday cake. But she was big on protein. So she thought, wow, you know, you in order to be healthy, you have to have protein. So the meat and the dairy scene were just unbelievable. And then with the German father, you can imagine, you know, meat, meat, meat all the time. But other than that, <laughs> it was okay. But when I became a vegetarian when I was 16, we had a lot of head clashing because she was so afraid that, uh, oh gosh, you're not going to get enough protein. You're still growing. Well, I'm six feet tall. I mean, how big does she want me to get? So anyway, um, the years go by and uh, she's on her own and doing really well. And then she's about 90. Now she's had, she got high blood pressure at uh, menopause, just like I did. So she was on maintenance for that, didn't work. Western medicine doesn't really work that well for, um, for high blood pressure. So her blood pressure was up and down and, and the heart stuff. My dad died of a heart attack at age 67. Um, my mom went on to live to 90, at which point she I got a call from her doctor saying, your mom's just been admitted. You need to get out here. She's got about a week left. So I flew cross country. She was living in Virginia. I'm in California. And uh, she had a UTI. So she didn't recognize me. She was really sick. But they'd done a lot of work. They found an aortal aneurysm that uh, was near her heart. And she had a lot of other problems. Her diet was not good at all. Um, she'd slipped into like all that greasy food in that she had were around her friends and stuff. So she was sick. And the doctor said, this, this, you need to understand this is it. She might not die today. She's got about a week. So do what you need to do, make arrangements. So what we did was um, they put her into like a hospice care rehab center and I managed to convince them to let me take her out to lunch. And my kids flew out to help me. And we stole her. <laughs> we put her on an airplane. We hid out in a hotel room until we got all the arrangements made. We put her on an airplane. I'm praying, please, God, don't let her die on the airplane. She couldn't even sit up. I mean, poor woman. And we got her home. And I thought, I had promised her years before that uh, she was terrified of ending up in an old person's home. And I promised her that wasn't going to happen. So we brought her home and my husband's fabulous. He said, yeah, go get her. And we were waiting for her to die any day and we just fed her what we were eating. Well, the, by the end of the week, she had color in her face. By the end of six weeks, she was off of all of her meds except the blood pressure. She lived another three years, perfectly healthy. And finally that aortal aneurysm popped and that took her. But um, isn't that an amazing story? That is the power of food. Absolutely, it's amazing. And you hear them more than you realize if you listen. If you listen, yeah. And people hear it and they don't believe it. We've been, posting, yeah, we've been posting the link to the previous interview where you talked a little bit about your work as a medium. And that reminded me, do you know what you call an anorexic psychic who's running from the law? 
I have no idea. This is a Jeopardy question. It's a joke. What do you call an anorexic psychic who's running from the law? A small medium at large. Oh, oh, excuse me. Um, hey, no, that's, that's, good. that's good. <laughs> I'm, lunch yet. I'm sorry. When I'm hungry, I, I, t I tend to tell bed. But that's good. I might have to keep that. You know, is, is, you know, I always wanted to ask you, because I've had sessions with you, and we're not here to sell you anything, but I, she, I, she has this other service that I've done and my, and my friends have done where you channel Lee Chen. I always wondered, and I never asked you, like, is can anybody be a medium? Can anybody learn to do that? Or is this just a gift? Um, it was like a contract before I even came into body. And, that, and I didn't know that. I've always been psychic. Um, and as a child, it was cool because I could see people's spirit guides behind them and their auras swirling around with their colors. And so I could see a lot more about people than, than anybody else could, but I didn't know it. When I was about 10, I was talking about somebody having great colors and they looked at me funny. What do you mean? And I said, your colors, you know, your colors. And they told me I was going to end up in the funny farm. Well, it sounded like a really fun place. Um, but when I asked my mom what a funny farm was, she said, that's where they send crazy people. So then I got really scared and I tried to shut it down and it didn't work. And I was just unhappy for years until I came across a teacher who put me through my paces, taught me how to use my gift and how to turn it off. And she was the same one who brought me to Reiki. That was in 1975. Nobody knew about Reiki then except a few people. And living in California, Hawaiian Takata was the Reiki master, grandmaster of Reiki. And she brought Reiki out of Japan to the rest of the world. So she's the source of Reiki. I studied with her my first and second degrees. And um, I later became a master because after she died, Reiki started getting lost. It was changed and it was diminished. So I teach Reiki too. But with the, with the channeling, in my training, I, I never was attracted to channeling because I thought it was too dramatic. And, and I'm not somebody who likes the spotlight. And uh, I thought, you know, there are a lot of charlatans out there too. So I never wanted to have anything to do with channeling. <laughs> Should have known. So yeah, in my meditations, and one of my spirit guides, Lee Chen, he's an ascended master, he would show up. And first he was like in this hood and he was this massive figure uh, energetically, and I, which meant that he was important, but he wouldn't say anything. He just stood there. And as I'm doing my meditation daily and daily, and he's always there, I finally said, um, who are you? And he said, I am Lee Chen. We want you to sit in front of the typewriter for an hour every day. And I said, why? I don't have anything to say. And he said, ah, but we do. So that was how I started channeling. And what came out of that was a course of psychic development that I taught for years. Everybody has psychic ability to one degree or another. Everybody can cultivate that ability. Trans mediumship is rare. Um, and um, yeah, it's not something to seek, I don't think. Wow. I, I, I could say I could say a lot about that, but yeah, but th that's that's enough. It, and it works for me. And I like it because um, when I first started channeling Lee Chen, uh, I didn't want to be unconscious because even though it wasn't my words, it was coming out of my mouth and I was responsible for the information. So I needed to understand that it was uh, useful information and not crazy stuff and not uh, negative stuff. So I was sort of remotely conscious. It was like um, looking at, at something from the opposite end of a telescope where I would felt like I zoomed back and there was this information here, but I could still hear it very, very faintly. And then once I was convinced that this was really useful and, and beneficial, then I go to sleep, which is great because I assume people tell their deepest, darkest secrets and share their deepest fears with Lee Chen. It's not my business. I don't need to know that. I don't want to carry the burden of that knowledge. 
I would be terrified if I said something, you know? So it's very clean. I go to sleep, Lee Chen talks, I wake up. So I'm basically the secretary here. That's neat. That's kind of how I feel like here. I'm just the techie on these broadcasts. Uh, Jan wants to know if all the recipes in all your books are SOS free. I know everything is strictly oil free and yeah. low fat. Um, a couple of recipes have some sugar. Most of the dessert recipes have things like date sugar or I use agave syrup and I know a lot of people don't. And I've sort of looked at that. It's like, well, you know, that's that's personal choice. So salt, um, I am a salt user, uh, but a lot less than I used to be. And in my recipes, salt is always optional because it's, they're always high flavor. Yeah, I find that, the, that I love when, when chefs just do salt to taste because you, you know, I've never had to add salt to your recipes. I, I think maybe one I put Benson's Table Tasty in. So, um, Gina has a question on developing her psychic ability. Is that something you can, Gina says, how do I cultivate my psychic ability? Can you help with that? Oh, you bet. And the short answer is meditate every day for 30 minutes. And that's simple, but don't ever confuse that with easy because it's the hardest thing you're ever going to do. There's no goal involved. As Lee Chen says, you want to be like an empty, he's got this funny little accent, sort of Chinese Oxford. He says, you want to be like empty vessels so you can be filled with something greater, which I think is just so beautifully said. So the process of meditation is you're going to get a timer that doesn't tick, set it for 30 minutes, because trust me, when you close your eyes and take a breath, it's going to feel like half an hour and it's a minute and a half. Um, so just close your eyes and your thoughts will come up and you just let them go. You don't follow your thoughts. And the process teaches you to master your thoughts. And when you have mastered that, your thoughts are going to be more profound and more clear and more accurate. You will be able to access a deeper knowledge from a deeper place that will arrive in your mind as a thought, but it has a different quality to it. This is very subtle stuff. It doesn't happen right away. And if you've been meditating for years, well, just keep on going. Um, it does change you. It gives you patience. It gives you clarity. Um, it gives you discernment. It gives, brings you wisdom. And that's what psychic ability is, really. It's the pineal gland in the center of the brain. And you're, that's what you're developing. How long have you meditated? And is there any form of meditation that you specifically do? And how would you teach other people or tell other people to get yeah, it, meditation practice? Um, I'm the comfy chair method of meditation. Um, find a place that supports your body so you can just, any kind of physical holding is going to distract you. So let your body, don't lie down. You want your feet on the floor. You got to be sitting up. This is not a sleeping session. You're not going to take a nap. You're practicing releasing your thoughts without following them. Your thoughts will continue to come up. The first few weeks are a living hell. Um, when I first started meditating, it was my mind was telling me, you have to go call this person. You have to look up this word in the dictionary. Oh my gosh, you have to think about dinner. You have laundry to do. You have blah, 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 blah. Your mind feels very threatened when you stop uh, following it. It's not king anymore. So it's going to react in that way. And after a couple of weeks, it will realize, nah, it's okay. She's not trying to kill me. Things are just different now. And, and it gets better from there. But it is a process. And, and as to your question, um, do I meditate? I don't meditate anymore because I spend so much time with Lee Chen. Um, and that what meditation does, it's, it activates your higher chakras. And what you want to do is have your whole chakra system in balance. You don't want to be either um, all in the physical or all in the mental or all in the spiritual. You want to have that harmony. And that will keep you physically healthy, emotionally healthy, and spiritually in balance. So it's all about balance. And that's why I don't meditate. Although I can. Can you send Lee Chen here so I don't have to meditate? <laughs> <laughs> My daughter... I suspect she has ADHD. 
she can't meditate to save her life. Her mind is just like really like a butterfly. And she can't read for the same reason. She's not dyslexic. I mean, she can read the words, but her mind just goes nuts. That sounds like me. That's why I prefer audible. I'm, I kind of feel like I'm, a, like I'm a hummingbird. Yeah, that's my, a word my daughter has used too. Oh, oh, look, there's a flower over there. Oh no, over there, over there. Exactly. Oh, look, cows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So funny. We have uh, so guys. Sometimes it doesn't show your name; it just shows me Facebook user. But Facebook user says Jocelyn. I have loved making your Harira Harira. harira I can't say that word. Moroccan soup from your low fat vegan book. Oh, isn't that nice? Thank you, Facebook user. I love that recipe too. In fact, I was supposed to be in Morocco on uh, well Barcelona March fifteenth. Ooh, those Ides of March. So you know what happened? We didn't go. My son is, his birthday is three days before mine. Best birthday present I ever got. And um, he, for a joint birthday present, he signed us up to a vegan Moroccan cooking class. Oh, oh Middle Eastern food. So I was living for that. And I've always wanted to go to Morocco. So fortunately, Morocco's still there. I'll go another time. That's fun. That's where they pour the tea from up on high, right? I don't know. I've never been there. Oh, well, I, I've heard. I've I've heard about that in Moroccan restaurants. I don't know if I've ever actually had Moroccan food, but isn't that where you eat with your hands? I don't know. <laughs> hey, well, I guess we're not going to talk I, about Morocco anymore. I know a little about the spices <laughs> and the foods, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle Eastern food, oof, great. That's great. So if you guys have any more questions for Jocelyn, type them in and I will do my best to answer them. In the meantime, if you joined us late, we're talking to Jocelyn Grafe, who did a, the quickest cooking demo in the history of the world, three delicious recipes for dinner from her book, The Low Fat Herbivore. And then she has this other one, Low Fat Vegan Sauces. And I have been posting the link to her Etsy store, which I'll do again right now, which is where you get these books. They are not available right now in Amazon. And she also has really wonderful t-shirts and bags as well. And we'd really appreciate it if you also would consider subscribing to her YouTube channel because she has great recipes. How often are you uh, doing a recipe on your YouTube channel? Yeah, whenever I feel like it. I'm a free spirit. I can't lock myself down. <laughs> so it's been a couple times a week. Um, ooh, the next one I'm gonna do, I, in, in, it's also, in low fat herbivore is uh, vegetable curry. It's a very bland title, but ooh, it's good. That it's sounds good. amazing. It's, it's delicious. A lot of slicing and dicing, but other than that, simple. Sue wants to know, have you ever heard of Abraham? Of course. Are yeah. you guys friends like all you guys, like Seth and Abraham and you hang out? And I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, we all have different functions. Um, I used to do uh, public talks with Lee Chen and um, I spent a lot of time in England and I had crowds of people and that was all well and good. But I think Lee Chen's great gift is kind of as a therapist because he sees us in our totality. So if we've got an issue we can't get past, who knows? It could be coming from a past life or who knows? You know, an, a childhood incident we don't remember. And he's, he's amazing at spotting that. And all kinds of people use him for, well, they've taught me how, how they use him. I have a, a client who's a dog breeder. Oh, I think well, we talked about her. And she wants to, she uses Lee Chen to make sure that the dogs are, are being uh, bred properly and they're going to be healthy and happy and like that. Great. So last question. And uh, uh, well, first, Rosemary says, I, I love her free spirits. So delightful. But oh, thank you. Rosemary. And loves curry. So we look forward to that recipe. And we get this question on just about, I think, every guest we've ever had. We, oh, Emily's saying, when will her book be available again? It's available right now, Emily. It's just not available on Amazon. It's only available in her Etsy store. Right. The printer sent me two, two new boxes, so they're in stock. Nice. So Beverly wants to know, what do you eat for a day? Oh, well, I just had a, a big AJ size bowl of broccoli with some very thinned out tahini sauce. 
a couple of tablespoons of that. That was my lunch. For my breakfast, I had, I'm not a breakfast eater. It just makes me nauseous. So I had uh, a cup of tea with a half a banana. And again, full disclosure, I'm trying to lose five pounds here. It's working. Um, and then I have a normal dinner, you know, whatever, whatever I feel like. Well, that sounds great. Any last thoughts you want to share? Oh gosh, where to start? Just be well, you guys. Stay healthy, wear your masks, you know, be safe. You're important. The world needs your light. The animals need you. Like that. I love you guys. And thank you so much for all your encouragement and support. This is the best group of people, AJ. See what you attract. You're 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 like a great person magnet. Well, I call them, I got a new name for you guys. I hope you like it. They're my Zoomunity. Zoomunity. <laughs> we met on Zoom, so this is this is Zoomunity. That's that will be my. Name. I love it. Great, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, yeah. Ellen is saying you're a jewel, and Karen says that you're a pleasure. Oh. And tomorrow we have two more great guests for you. And again, if you please sign up to be on my mailing list, we send these out every night with the broadcast that you might have missed from that day. And then if you want to ask a question, you get priority by just hitting reply because then we have the speaker and the question right there. Because as you know, this feed goes quickly and every few minutes, the, the 10 comments that were there have disappeared. But tomorrow we also have a cooking demo at 1 p.m. with Chef Del Srofe. He did an interview a few weeks ago and people wanted him to come back and cook. And at 11 a.m., if you're a science nerd like me, we have Professor Mark Hellerberg from UC Berkeley. I've had so many requests to interview him. You probably don't know who he is because he's an, I mean, I, I, assuming you don't because I didn't he's an academic and I wanted him for the truth about weight loss summit but by the time that I was introduced to him it was really too late to do another interview but he was the professor of Cyrus Kambata who is the co-author of the New York Times best-selling book Mastering Diabetes who I had on a few weeks ago and apparently he's considered the world's leading expert in de novo lipogenesis so when Dr. McDougall says the fat you eat is the fat you wear he is going to be able to explain why so he's probably going to do a PowerPoint and have a whiteboard. So if you really want to understand the science of why I can eat three pounds of potatoes a day or four pounds even and still lose weight, he'll be able to explain it. So please come back tomorrow. Please consider subscribing not just to me on, on YouTube, but also to Jocelyn. We'd love for you to check out her books and her t-shirts and her bags. And if nothing else, make those recipes she made. Can you imagine three recipes in 10 minutes? All delicious. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. I really oh, enjoy your AJ, you're my hero, and you've been a mentor for a long time, whether you know it or not, and I really love you a lot. Thanks. Same here. Right back at you, and I love you guys, too, because you are my Zoom moon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.